guys welcome to my channel my name is Phoebe if you are new here if you are not welcome back today's video I wanted to talk about a few things that I have learned along the way since my PCOS diagnosis so a little background story regarding my diagnosis I was diagnosed with PCOS um, when I was 13 years old so this was back in 2003 it's been a long time um, I was diagnosed by my primary care physician. Um, when I got diagnosed, I was not immediately placed on a treatment. I was just diagnosed and that was about it. My mother and I went home and that was it. I started treating my PCOS with medications when I was about 16 years old. I started with metformin. I used metformin off and on until I was about 20, 21 years old when I without my doctor's consent, decided to take myself off of it entirely, do some research, and start treating myself as naturally as possible. It's been about seven years since I made that decision, and I have zero regrets. Ever since I decided to treat it naturally, my body has responded better, I'm doing better, my doctors are shocked, and I'm sharing my journey with women everywhere. So today I wanted to share with you all 10 things that I wish I knew after my PCOS diagnosis sooner. Um, and the reason I'm saying I wish I knew this sooner is because I've gone through a lot of trial and error. And nothing against trial and error, but if I knew some of these, thing these things sooner, I feel like I could have avoided a lot of failures. There's nothing wrong with failure, of course, but I could have probably hit a few of the goals that I have for myself health-wise a lot sooner if I knew all of this. Um, and I'm learning all of this as it's emerging, so I guess I probably wouldn't have known all of this at the age of 13. But I feel like for women who are recently diagnosed, and for women who probably were diagnosed um, back in the early 2000s as myself or even before that, I feel like it's going to help you all as well. Um, on my Instagram, I focus primarily on fitness, health, and PCOS, so I have a lot of women come to my DMs and just tell me how proud they are that I'm being transparent about my PCOS journey, asking me questions, and just asking for tips and advice, and I thought, why not make this video about what I have learned, and then have them just come watch it, and if they have any more questions, they can ask me in the description box, I mean in the comment box. Um, so... Enough said about my background story. If you want to know more about my journey with PCOS, I'm going to link a video about my journey above. So just check it out. And also check out the PCOS playlist. I promise you won't hate it. So of course I have my handy dandy laptop. I'm so impressed that I have an Apple um, MacBook. When I first started college, everybody had a MacBook, but my parents couldn't really afford one. So I had like a Dell laptop. Um, my MacBook is a used MacBook, but I'm so proud of it because I bought it myself with my own little chicken change. Um, and it just makes me so happy, so I always like bring it out whenever I can. <laughs> Anyways, so the reason I bought out my MacBook is because I wrote out everything that I wanted to share with you all because it's better for me to have them written down so I can give it to you like consistently and in sync without breaking and thinking and just having a brain freeze, you know? So without further ado, let's get started. So the number one thing I wish I knew about PCOS after my diagnosis was exactly what PCOS was. When I got diagnosed, my doctor said these exact words, you have polycystic ovarian disease. And I remember running out of the room and just leaving my mom in there with her because when she said the word disease, I kind of just saw myself dying at a very young age. When you tell a teenager, a young teenager, that she has a disease, the first thing that comes to mind is, oh, I'm going to die at a very, very early age. So growing up with PCOS, I never really knew what the definition was or what it was. I never really understood it. Um, but years have come, years have passed, and I really think I know what PCOS is. And I just want to share that with you all because a lot of women just know they have PCOS, but they don't really know what PCOS is. So polycystic ovarian syndrome is a metabolic disorder. It's a metabolic disorder with hormonal imbalances. That's the number one thing about PCOS. It's a hormonal imbalance. Um, it's actually the most common hormonal imbalance found in women. Um, and I honestly, when I 
learned this a few years ago, I was just like, oh, I'm not alone. And even though a lot of women, excuse me, weren't coming forward saying I have PCOS, knowing that it's the most common hormonal imbalance, I knew something was not just wrong with me. I knew that it was something that was common and I was not weird. Because when I got diagnosed, I labeled myself as weird. Um, and I walked around feeling weird, feeling down, and just feeling left out and feeling alone in this diagnosis. Number two, there is a link between PCOS and insulin resistance. Um, a lot of women who have PCOS are insulin resistant. Some know that they are and some don't know that they are. Um, in my case, I only learned two years ago that I was insulin resistant. Um, and I learned from my friend who was actually a physical therapist. She actually told me that the reason I may have issues with my weight is because of my insulin and I may be insulin resistant and she was very right. I was very insulin resistant. Um, in, so high insulin is both a symptom of PCOS and it's an underlying psychological driver for PCOS. High insulin can impair ovulation and cause the ovaries to make excess testosterone. And again, PCOS is a hormonal imbalance. If you are creating more testosterone, it's basically throwing your hormones out of whack because we have a level that we're supposed to be at. So say this is the normal level. With PCOS, we're producing so much testosterone that we pass the normal level and we just keep going up and our estrogen is just here. So imagine your estrogen is here, your testosterone is here. That's not normal, that's abnormal. That's an imbalance. So the goal with PCOS is to basically get those things in balance. Um, number three, now these are in no form, like it doesn't really matter how I'm reading it off. It just came to mind at work and I was just typing it out. Number three, PCOS can have an impact on your mental health. People who have been diagnosed with PCOS are three times more likely to be diagnosed with anxiety and depression than people without PCOS. Reduced or poor mental and emotional health can make it difficult to look after yourself. Like following a healthy lifestyle and making the best decisions about your health is hard when you are depressed, when you are anxious, when you are going through mood swings. Um, awareness of the effects on, of mood on managing lifestyle is the key to managing PCOS. This is huge. Um, the first time I had an anxiety attack, I was with my best friend and I didn't know why I had an anxiety attack. I could not pinpoint it. I don't know what it was. But we had to literally stop in the middle of Target and she had my, thankfully my best friend is a nurse, so she knew exactly what to do. I can't really remember what happened. I just know that I could not breathe. I could not catch my breath. I was scared. I was panicking and I could not breathe. I told my doctor about it and she said, you had an anxiety attack. You had a panic attack. Um, I know for a fact I suffer from seasonal depression. I know for a fact that I suffer from mood swings. And... Learning that PCOS can impact my mental health, that was a relief because I didn't know what was causing this and I didn't know what to do. Um, but learning that, that PCOS has a hand in all of this, it was helpful. Again, it reassured me that I was not weird, that I was not crazy, and that I was not alone, and that this was something that was common because of this condition that I am, that I am living with. Um, so number four. PCOS symptoms can be reversed, but they can also come back. A lifestyle change is the, is the most beneficial and most important way to reverse your PCOS symptoms. A lot of people, when they get diagnosed with PCOS, they're immediately told, lose weight, and your PCOS will go away forever, and that's not the case. Losing weight is not the number one way to treat PCOS. An entire lifestyle change is the number one way to treat PCOS. And I did not learn that again until recently. For a long time, my focus was to lose weight. My focus was to get under 200 pounds. My focus was to lose 100 pounds. The highest I've ever been was 266. So I told myself the weight chart says I have to be five. I mean, I have to be 160 or 100, 160, 166 pounds. So I told myself I have to lose 100 pounds. So for a long time, my goal, my drive was 100 pounds. Did I ever get close to losing 100 pounds? Yes, the most I've ever lost was 60, but I gained it back because I wasn't changing my lifestyle. I was just focusing on the whole weight loss aspect. Um, the moment I decided to focus on lifestyle changes, 
my body fat percentage went from 45% to 29%. And that to me was amazing. Um, number five, PCOS is a hormonal disorder again. It's usually caused by overproduction of testosterone. I know this is redundant, but I feel like I have to say it again. Knowing where your hormones are is imperative. Like, it's so important. Like, you always want to know exactly if your hormones are balanced or not. Like, if you feel weird um, after a while, go get your doctor, do a blood test, and just see exactly where all your hormones are. If something is out of whack, it can probably explain why you're feeling the way you're feeling. Um, I see my doctor every six months. I try to see my doctor every six months. Um, and every time I go, we do a blood test so she can see where my hormones are because honestly, life can cause my hormones to go out of whack. Life. Like, I promise you. <laughs> Number six. With PCOS, you may experience male pattern, symptom, male pattern symptoms. Symptoms such as acne, hair growth, hair loss. Um, some non-male um, male symptoms include alopecia. <laughs> and the reason I stopped there is because I've literally suffered from all of that. For a long time, I was losing the hair at the crown of my head and at the front of my head. But the, my mustache was growing at an obscene rate. My chin was growing hair at an obscene rate. My belly, like literally, I felt hairy everywhere else but where I really wanted hair and that was at the top of my head. I was growing hair here like I could use my little near and the hair would be back in less than a week and it was frustrating very frustrating um and this again is just a consequence of the excess androgens aka testosterone that is in our bodies um and none of this can be fixed until you balance your hormones so what's the lesson here pcos is a hormone disorder the number one way to treat it balance your hormones I need some drink. Ooh, all this talking make your mouth dry. So I am currently doing an extended fast. I am on day three of my fast. So I'm drinking some green tea. Um, and I feel great. Um, what number were we on? We were on number seven. Number seven, PCOS, PCOS symptoms affect women differently. Um, do not compare your symptoms, your diagnosis, your treatment, or your progress with women, with other women. Um, and it took me a long time to learn that I was comparing myself with people who had PCOS but was skinny. I was comparing myself with people who had PCOS but found it easy to lose weight. I was comparing myself with people who had PCOS but weren't experiencing hair loss or hair growth or the whole big belly i compared myself to everybody who did not look like me who said they had pcos and for a long time it took a toll on my mental health it took a toll on my self-image it took a toll on my it just it took a toll on my entire existence and once i stopped doing that i felt a hundred times better so the one thing i just want to say is do not compare yourself with anyone else yes we have pcos and we do share that in common but that's it that's all we share in common. We don't share lifestyle. We don't share challenges. We don't share diagnosis. We don't share doctors. All we share is our PCOS diagnosis. That is literally it. Um, we have PCOS. That is the greatest thing that we have in common. Um, yes, you can use other people for support, but do not allow others who have found success in losing weight with PCOS to affect you. Don't, because you'll be okay. I promise you. Number eight, a low carb or a ketogenic lifestyle is one of the greatest approaches towards treating PCOS. And I know a lot of people are going to say no, but this is just my opinion. And I am using my experience to give this opinion. The reason I say this is because for a long time, I followed a bodybuilder type lifestyle. I was eating six meals a day, three meals, three snacks. I made sure I never missed a meal. And I literally would lose two to three pounds every month the minute i started a ketogenic lifestyle 
I was losing weight consistently. My body fat was dropping consistently. Um, I had a lifestyle and a diet that fit my condition, that worked with my lifestyle. I was working out, I wasn't being excessive. I was following my diet through and through. I was on point. And that was the minute that my body fat got under 30% and I was so ecstatic. I had abs. And the reason I say had is because seasonal depression is a bitch and I gained 30 pounds back. But it's okay, because we are working towards getting it off. Um, but yeah, that's just my opinion. If you are treating your PCOS and managing your PCOS with carbs, that's great. Everyone does not have to follow a low carb or a ketogenic lifestyle. I just feel like in my opinion, extra fats in your diet make a huge difference for your hormones. Because not a lot of people know, but fats, um, our hormones, the fats in our body transfer hormones. Like they move the hormones through our body. So it's like the more fat you're giving your body, the better it is at moving these hormones and basically helping you in your goal to balance your hormones. I don't know if that makes sense, but I was trying to spit some biology out there. I don't know. Yeah. Um, although I believe it is a great approach to treating PCOS, I know for a fact I'm going to live a low carb lifestyle for the rest of my life, but I will not live a ketogenic lifestyle. I cannot not have carbs. I am Cameroonian by birth. I like rice. I like fufu. I like puff puff. I like carbs. Okay, there's no way you can tell me that I should give up carbs. When I said no, absolutely not. I no, 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 no. It won't happen. No. Anyways, let's go to number nine. There is more than one type of PCOS. You heard that right. I didn't know this. I thought PCOS was one thing, but no, there are different types of PCOS. You can have one. You can have two or you can have three. Um, treatment will be slightly different based on which one you have. And let me tell you what these three are. The first one is insulin resistant PCOS, which is what I have. The second is elevated androgen PCOS, which is also what I have. <laughs> the third is ovulation dysfunction. Thankfully, I don't have that, okay? So, in my goal to treat my PCOS naturally, I am treating two types of PCOS. I am treating the insulin resistant type and the elevated androgen type. Thankfully, my androgens are not elevated anymore, so right now my focus is to treat my insulin resistant, which can take a while, but I'm okay with that because patience is a virtue. Number 10, PCOS does not have a look. Let me say that one more time. PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, does not have a look. Having irregular or absent periods, being overweight does not mean you have PCOS. Being infertile does not necessarily mean you have PCOS. Why? There are plenty of women in the world who are not overweight, who are not infertile, who are not experiencing irregular periods who have PCOS. Why? Because there are different types of PCOS, as I mentioned. So this just goes to say, you cannot look at yourself in the mirror and diagnose yourself with PCOS. I am sorry, it just does not work that way. Um, and a lot of people are gonna be like, why are you saying that? Because it's the truth. It's, it's the truth, okay? I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but stop self-diagnosing yourself, go to the doctor. And that leads us to number 11. This is actually a bonus. I got two bonuses for you all. There are several tests that can and should be done to diagnose PCOS. These tests are adrenal panel, fasting insulin, thyroid panel, androgen panel, and a blood panel test that includes glucose, hemoglobin A1C. This is the one that tells you if you are diabetic, pre-diabetic, or not even close. And again, your fasting insulin level. These tests are really important and they will help your doctor identify which type of PCOS you're suffering from and how to come up with a plan of care for you. And it will also tell your doctor if you don't have it so you can stop self-diagnosing yourself in front of your bedroom mirror. I'm sorry. Number 12. The best method for treating PCOS is not the conventional way your doctor may be used to. And a lot of doctors will probably be like, don't listen to her, she's lying. No, 
I'm not. I'm not a doctor. You don't have to take my advice. But I do not believe the conventional way for treating PCOS is the number one way to treat it. The number one conventional treatment for PCOS has been and still is the diabetic drug metformin, which is ridiculous. It's so crazy to me that 14 years later, they're still diagnosed, they're still prescribing metformin to treat PCOS. That is mind blowing. Um, this method is not helping women. It's only making drug companies richer while treating a few of the symptoms that come along with having PCOS. The second most con most used conventional method for treating PCOS, oral contraceptives, AKA birth control, which I have never taken because my African mother said, no, my doctor said, mm -mm. my mom said she does not want me on birth control. So I did not take it. Yeah. Anyways, oral contraceptives is the other recommended treatment for PCOS. And again, it only benefits the pharmaceutical companies because it's not treating PCOS. It's only treating a symptom of PCOS. Doctors nowadays leave women feeling unseen, unheard, and unsupported, which is quite frankly very disheartening because it's been 14 years since I got diagnosed. And every time I get a new PCP, aka a primary care physician, they say the same thing. Would you like for me to put you on metformin? Why is that your first question? Like, why is that your first? Like, why? Why can't you sit with me and say, OK, let's come up with a way to treat your PCOS without putting you on that nasty ass medicine? Ugh. All right. So that's it. Twelve things, not ten things that I wish I knew sooner after my PCOS diagnosis. I do have a few things to say though. You can absolutely treat PCOS naturally. Again, I've been doing it for the past seven years and the only regret I have is that I did not start sooner. When you decide to treat your PCOS naturally, do not completely ignore your doctor's advice, especially if you are diabetic, borderline diabetic, or going through anything else. Um, but also do not allow your doctor to scare you or discourage you because you can do a lot when it comes to your health no one knows you like you find a specialist who values whose values are aligned with yours because that really matters when you're trying to break away from conventional treatments you want someone who understands what it is you are trying to do someone who will support you because sometimes you don't have support at home and the next best person to get support from is the person who's helping you treat this condition um set your intentions on healing your body write those intentions down Put it out into the universe, put it on your vision board, put it in your daily planner, share your intentions with your doctor, with your doctors, share it with your close family members, your friends, basically share it with whoever is going to be by your side during this transition. Do your own research. A lot of people hate that. They go to Instagram and the, they just ask questions instead of using Google, which is free.com by the way. A lot of people go to Instagram and ask, influencers questions that are easily answered online ridiculous but anyways do your own research the only reason i've been able to treat my pcos naturally for almost a decade is because of the time i set aside to do my own research if i have a particular symptom and it's not getting better guess what i do i hop on google and start looking up research um research that has been done for this particular symptom or i reach out to my friends who are doctors because the new up and coming generation of doctors are not using conventional treatments and I love that. Okay? They are pulling away from it and I just love it. Y'all keep doing it. I see you guys. I thumbs up. Give my video a thumbs up too. Um last but not least, you do not have to do this alone. If you cannot find anyone in them in your immediate corner to help you or to encourage you or to support you or to keep you accountable, follow me on Instagram subscribe to my channel send me an email like i'm not kidding i am willing to talk to anybody i'm willing to share my experiences share my tips share a recipe share a hairstyle i'm here for you like if you need someone to talk to slide in my comment box leave me a comment sis let's talk okay i got you we got this okay eh. um treating pcos naturally will test your patience it won't ever be easy it will leave you hurting, it will leave you confused, it will leave you disappointed, it'll leave you second guessing yourself, but it will always be worth it. 
I don't care what anybody says. It will always be worth it. So that's all. That's all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. The next video is going to be on how I treated my PCOS naturally, lost weight, and got my period back. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please click that bell notification so that you know when I post a new video so you can keep up with me. Um, come back. Send your friends. Share it with your friends, share it with your co-workers, just share it. I thank you all so much for joining me today. This was great and I hope you all enjoyed this video. I do put in a lot of research um, when it comes to topics like this because I know if they help me, they will help you all also. So once again, thank you.